I have a mother's sense. But, uh, mother, I feel that hey, hey, right up in here. <laughs> But I promise God this year that I will change the atmosphere when I come into the house. The house has already been addressed, right?
Amen. Amen. Uh, again, uh, I, I'm just delighted to be here and have an opportunity to, to share with you. Now, I want to say that the bishop has, has said most of the things that I wanted to say, so uh, if I can just have about 20 minutes, I'll be out. Amen. Since he covered most of it already. <laughs> if you would, uh, would you go with me from a, a couple of a verse, a couple of places in Scripture? For the book of Mark, 14 chapter, verse number 26 through 31. Mark 14 chapter, verse number 26 through 31. Mark 14, chapter, verse number 26 through 31. And then we're just going to look at uh, Luke 22, verse number 54 through 62. Verse number 26 of Mark 14, it says, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said unto them, All, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. But it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that, I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. From the book of uh, Amen, Luke, 22nd chapter, verse number 54, Luke 22, verse 54. Are you there? Amen. Verse number 54 of Luke 22, it says, Then took they him and led him and brought him into a, a high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain, a certain man beheld him and said, and, and, as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour, after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him. For he is a Galilean. Amen. I want to just go back to verse number 55. And he says that. And when they had kindled a fire. In the midst of the hall. And were set down together. Peter sat down among them. <clears throat> I want to share with you. Just for a little while. From the title warming at the wrong fire. And you may be seen it. I found, I, I was listening to Bishop and, and uh, listening to what he said, but one of the issues is that every time we, we check the statistics, we find where there are more ministers leaving the gospel. They're leaving by the thousands. We always hear about membership dwindling and people leaving the church, but it's just not the people, but it's also those who have been called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're leaving because of the stress and, uh, because of, uh, 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 of the burnout, because of, of having to deal with us, amen, having to deal with people who, who are always looking for someone else, uh, want to looking for another voice, amen, amen. It doesn't matter whether the voice is accurate, it doesn't matter whether it, it is from God, just to hear another voice, amen. They just want to hear someone else. Amen. And we find ourselves uh, getting our spiritual advice from people who have no, no, no standard in God and have no morals and, 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 and really uh, just got saved last week and, 
we go to them to get spiritual advice. It's amazing to me why we, we always go to the wrong folk because, uh, amen, we're warming ourselves at the wrong fire. We'll go to folk for, for, for marital advice that's never been married. For parental advice and they never, don't even have any children. We always go to the wrong source. Amen, amen. And, 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 and it, it is because uh, uh, we're dealing with folks. It's tough pastoring now. Amen, amen. Because there's so many sources and they search the internet and they, 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 they're looking for somebody that'll tell me something different. Uh, just, just, just tell me anything that, that will cause me to be able to do what I want to do. And not be convicted of it. Amen. I don't, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear a word that's going to make me feel bad. Amen. Amen. I want to continue in my sin, but I want to feel good about it. And so we'll find out somebody that'll make us feel good while we're in our mess. We're looking for everybody uh, that's not that's in our church is not for us. And I pray that this year in 2019. God will uncover all of the secret agents and undercover workers and that, that's in our church, but, uh, but they're not for us. They just, they just there and they're watching and, and they're listening and they're waiting for something to start up so they can stir it up and so they can try to uh, uh, campaign for somebody else to get you out of, uh, uh, amen. We, we just, I pray that God will uncover every one of them. Another thing, you gotta be careful for, uh, about the, those members you have that's always doing stuff for folk. Amen. They always doing stuff and they blessing this person and blessing that person because it all, it all, it's not always God. Sometimes it's the spirit of Jezebel. And the spirit of Jezebel is always trying to gain loyalty. Just folks that, that, that lower to them. And, amen. You end up with folks that lower, more loyal to one of your members than they are to you. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter, you heard Peter. Uh, he, he spoke. Peter spoke. Uh, he, he spoke boldly about what he wouldn't do. Although, uh, uh, all shall offend me. Yet not I. Y'all heard him, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. If I should die, uh, uh, yeah. If I should die with you, I will not deny you. That's what Peter said. Uh, you, 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 you got to be careful uh, with, with folks just uh, saying what they won't do. In fact, we got to be careful ourselves of saying what we won't do. Because the truth of the matter is that none of us know what we, what we won't do. Until we face the situation ourselves. Amen, amen. And until uh, when the pressure is on and when all hell is breaking loose, we don't know what we won't do until we have to face it. Not only that, but you got to be careful, uh, yeah, with people who say to you, Pastor, I got your back. The Lord sent me here and I ain't going nowhere. And a month later, you got the, the, amen, the FBI can't find them. And then they act like they never knew you. The devil know how to put pressure on you. That's why folks are leaving. Uh, uh, the, 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 the pastors are leaving the ministry because pressure. Somebody help me say pressure. He know how to put pressure on you. And it's pressure when people uh, of the same blood flowing through their veins turn against you. It's pressure when when person that you thought would never leave your side turn and walk away. It's pressure when the devil is relentlessly attacking you for no apparent reason. But I want you to know today there is a reason. It might not be apparent, but there is a reason. You see, Herod wasn't out to kill Jesus because he was afraid of a baby. Pharaoh wasn't killing all of the male children uh, because he was afraid of a baby Moses. But he was afraid of what those babies were going to become. Somebody help me say there is a reason. 
It might not be, uh, yeah, it might not be because of what's going on right now, but there is a reason. Amen. But but he, he's looked into your future. And he's finding where you are. When you're going through it, uh, it's not because of where you are right now. He sees where God is going to take you to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got a glimpse of what God is going to do in your life. It might look like, and you might be wondering, why is the enemy fighting me so vigorously? I just got a small ministry of few folks. It uh, doesn't look like I'm doing them any harm, but it's not about what's going on right now. But he understands that if I don't stop you now, oh, bless the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. He see what God's going to do. Uh, not only in, in the church, but some of you sitting out there, the devil is fighting you to their toenail. And you, it looks like it's for no apparent reason. But there is a reason. He looked into your future and made up his mind that I've got to stop it. And I've got to stop it right now. He know how to put pressure on you. It's pressure. Yeah, it's pressure. Uh, he's attacking. He's attacking. He's attacking. And he's attacking over and over again. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, there is a reason. It, 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 it might, it's not because of what's going on now. The problem, look at Peter. The problem with Peter is that uh, he didn't know himself. And people who don't know themselves. Uh, they can become very critical of other folks. Uh, what do you mean you're feeling depressed? What do you mean you almost gave up? But the truth of the matter is, uh, uh, there is a breaking point for everybody. But we can become very critical when we don't know ourselves. Right. We'll criticize folks. Yeah. Amen. For what they're going through. Yeah. But you got to be careful because one day yeah. that same thing you criticize them for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, 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 when you are under enough pressure, you'll be wanting to give up yourself. The trouble is we can't tell anybody. Oh, God. Yeah, you see, we can't tell anybody uh, that we're under pressure. We can't tell anybody we're under stress. We can't tell anybody that, 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 that I don't feel like I can make it another year. But when we need someone to lean on, and we need to share our feeling with somebody. We can't tell it because we're too quick to criticize and start saying that I thought you were strong and then that. I thought that, uh, amen, but the truth of the matter is pressure. We need to give folks an opportunity to be, to be real and let them know that I know you're saved and I know God has called you, but I know you're human too. And, 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 and enough stress and enough pressure and enough relentless, relentless pressure will cause you to, you need to go to somebody, even if you don't. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of folks who are in the pulpit now thinking about giving up. And if they had somebody that they could talk to, that wouldn't tell everything, and wouldn't be critical, if they had somebody that they could talk to, and we wouldn't be judgmental, if they had somebody that they could talk to, to just let just so they can just pour out. Time. Once they get a chance to pour out, they're okay then. Yeah. They just need to release. Amen, amen. They, everybody got a relief valve too. They just need to release, release some of the pressure. And once they get it off, they're okay then. Yeah. Somebody help me say pressure. pressure. It is that relentless pressure. Yeah. Relentless. Yeah. There's a breaking point for everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yes. Amen. Even in a marriage. There's a breaking point. I know they say it's for better or for worse, but 
if you push me far enough. You had the better. Even the most quiet and meek and I'm assuming person and you never hear them raise their voice you never hear them say anything out of order and uh, uh, amen uh, but if you push them far enough hard enough there is a breaking point and, and, and what you never want to see is a quiet person go off Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep on thinking you can run over them. Keep on thinking they're weak and keep pushing. Because at, at some point, they're going to break. And when they do, you don't even want to be in the state. Because once they break, as much as it took to get them to break, it's going to take more than that to calm them back down. Because now they're going to start thinking about it. All those times I should have said something and I didn't say something. Now they think about all that stuff I took and I shouldn't have taken it. Now they think about all that. Uh, amen. And they're going to explode on somebody. Touch somebody and say, you better leave me alone. You better leave me alone. we find out that most of, most of the mighty men of God, and most of the mighty men of, of the Bible uh, went through breaking points. Men like Moses who thought he could uh, fight by his own strength ended up on the backside of the desert 40 years, feeling, uh, uh, 40 years fleeing for his life. Men like Elijah who called fire down from heaven. That same Elijah found himself on a juniper tree saying it is enough. Let me die with, with, with my fathers because the mighty man of God had come to a breaking point. Uh, Job uh, talked real good, uh, amen, about the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But when the battle got worse, Job, uh, uh, amen, uh, uh, look at Job. Cursed be the day that I came out of uh, into this world. The Bible said Peter followed Jesus, but he followed from afar off. He, he's still following. He's still coming to church. Amen. Amen. But he's doing it from afar off. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. Uh, the, the, he, he followed. He's still, yeah, yeah. He's still uh, making meetings, but it's from afar off. You would be surprised of people who come to church, but are following at a distance. They are neutral Christians. And, and when the pressure is on, they can go either way. You don't know which the way, direction they're going to go. Amen. When the pressure is on. Yeah, yeah. They make uh, no commitment to anything. No commitment to the Lord. Not going to work on any committees. Not going to be a part of any auxiliary. They come late and leave early. They follow at a distance. Maybe they realize that when you uh, take a stand for God, uh, amen, uh, you're going to run into pressure. And opposition and, and everybody is not going to like you amen there will be people who are following you but are not for you they are following you but they are not with you and when it's convenient for them to say your name uh, they'll say it when it looks like it's, it'll go to open doors but in the wrong crowd they don't even know you he was willing to fight everything yeah, he, he, he could be willing to fight everything he could see. Fight the storm. Fight the soldier. But the, the problem is uh, what the problem is what brought Peter to his breaking point, brought him to his knees, wasn't the enemy he could see. But the, it was the enemy that he could not see. Amen. Uh, it, that's, that's what bothers, that's what gets us off course, is that. Uh, the, 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 devil, the devil had made a transition. Uh, he's not fighting as much in the, in the flesh, but he's fighting in the spirit. And if we don't make that transition, amen, the devil be hitting us in the spirit, but we only know how to retaliate in the flesh. And that's why we start, the devil hit us, but he hit us in the spirit. 
All I know how to fight is in the flesh. So I'm going to hit whoever's closest to me. Uh, amen. Somebody help me say, you got to make the transition. This is a spiritual warfare. The devil is doing stuff like he's never done before. And we don't know how to fight in the spirit. We'll always be snapping and biting at each other. Because the devil's been hitting us all upside in my head. And keeping me awake at night. Get up out of the bed and look like somebody been fighting in the bed. Sheets and stuff tore up and laying everywhere. It's because I've been in a spiritual battle. And I don't know how to fight this. Sometimes when they hit you, it's, 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 you know, it's not personal. They just got hit. But they're not spiritual, so when they look around, uh, amen, you're the closest thing to them. And you know how, how folks used to walk up behind you and touch you on the shoulder. And you look around, now they've gone off, and you see the one that said it back. Amen. That's the way the devil is doing it. Amen. He, he, he's touching you in the spiritual realm. But we're looking in the flesh. You can't fight this battle. Yeah, no, no, not in the flesh. You can't deal with me, thank you, this president in the flesh. It's going to take some folks going on their knees and say, God, only you can handle this food. No, oh, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Look at Peter. Peter got so far off, he, he sat down by the fire. He sat down by the fire. And he sat down by the fire with the enemy. Undercover secret agent. Warming himself at the fire of the secular. He was on one accord. Yeah, one with the world. In fellowship with the Jesus haters. Yeah, he sat down at the wrong, warming himself at the wrong fire. You're warming yourself at those who have persecuted your Savior. Warming yourself with the one that hates your Lord. Warming yourself with the one that fed you. Amen. With those who are, who, 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 who are against the one that fed you when you were hungry. You're warming yourself with the one that saved you when you was on your way to a burning hill. You're warming yourself with those who was against the one that, and that, that was just the only one that didn't give up on you. Now you sitting there warming yourself at their fire. Warming yourself at, at, at the fire of those that you know don't like your pastor. But you in fellowship with them. enough to be in fellowship with him. Have fellowship with the church but still warming himself at the enemy's fire. You got and, and, and you gotta be careful who you draw your strength from when you're under pressure. When 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 you when the pressure is on you gotta be careful uh, who you let comfort you. Uh, you gotta be careful who you let help you when you're under pressure. You got to be careful who be there for you when you're under pressure. Yeah, he could still see Jesus. And Jesus could see him too. He was a neutralized soldier. He was deluded and polluted. And, and a little girl looked at him and said, uh, that's one of them. Uh, you see, when, when the, the, this is the problem. When you really have been with Jesus, when, when you really belong to God, 
You, 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 you. You can go into the world and warm yourself at the wrong fire. But somebody is going to recognize you. And when they recognize you, they're going to say, you've been with the Lord. Yeah, you incognito, you try to disguise yourself, but you, when you really been with him, you can't hide it. Even when you try to hide it, somebody will look at you and know that you're in the wrong place. There's something different about you. And when you try to hide it, they know it's all over you. When you really, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, you've been with the Lord. They recognize you. You might not be with him now, but you've been with him. Amen. Uh, amen. Young folk leave the church, try to go out into the world. Amen. Uh, out there on the dance floor, shout. Look at you. You don't even dance right. Uh, uh, up in here shouting on the dance floor with your sanctified self. You've been with the Lord and it's showing. You can't hide it. Amen. You're in a strange land like a prodigal son. See, you can be in a strange land and never leave your neighborhood. When you leave how you've been raised and when you leave what, how you've been taught and when you leave the church and, and you try to go out into another uh, area of life, you are in a strange land. Yeah. You've been with him. You might not, yeah, you might not be with him now, but you've been with the Lord. Peter ended up doing what he said he would never do. Amen. Uh, I, I just wonder tonight, have you ever done what you like, but didn't like what you did? Uh, I, I just wonder, I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, have you ever uh, done what you like, but did it, you didn't like what you did? Amen, amen. You, 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 you like it and you did it. But then when it was over with, you didn't like what you did. Three times, he denied. He denied Jesus. And when Jesus rose from the dead, amen, he said, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. Uh, yeah. He didn't ask for Andrew. He didn't ask for James. He didn't ask for the sons of James, the son of Zebedee. He didn't ask for John. He didn't ask for Philip. He didn't ask for Bartholomew. He didn't ask for Thomas. He didn't ask for Matthew. Uh, he didn't ask, amen, I know we're in tax season, but he didn't ask for Matthew, the tax collector. He didn't ask for James, the son of Aphia. He didn't ask for Thaddeus. He didn't ask for Simon. Uh, he didn't ask for Judas, his carrier. He asked for Peter. He said, go and tell them to meet me in Galilee. And he sent a special invitation to Peter. And he said, and tell Peter. Yeah, yeah. Tell Peter to come to you. He asked for Peter. Look at somebody and say, uh, amen. You might not think I should be where I am. You might not think I should have what I have. But the Lord still wants me. Some folks be wondering what you're doing up there. What you, some folks be wondering what you're doing driving that car. Some folks be wondering what you're doing living in that house. You might not think I desire to be here. But the Lord didn't call for you. Tell him to come right along with those other boys. Yes, 
When they show up, I want Peter in the midst. I want him there. Amen. The story, the Lord still want me. Yes, and when, when, when he died, he died with Peter on his mind. And when he rose, he rose up thinking about Peter. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, which let me know uh, that we on God's mind. And you uh, can't sink so low that the Lord will forget about you. And you can't be so low that the God, uh, yes, uh, that will forget about the promise that he made in your life. And if you just hang on in there, now I want you to know that you're on God's mind. You might not be on anybody else's mind, but you're on God's mind. And it doesn't matter what you have been thinking of what you've done in your life. But the Lord will accept you if you just open up your arms and, and open up your heart and say, Father, I messed up. I've done many wrong things. But if we stand right here and let the Lord know, he will, he'll open up his arms and say, come unto me, all you who have labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The Lord will, he'll accept you back into the fold, give you a, a special invitation to meet me back at the church house, to meet me back at prayer meeting when you go down on your knees and say father I need some help he will he'll turn your life around it does not matter what you've done in your life the Lord is able to turn it around and I if I were you, I'd make up my mind that I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the Lord. I'm coming back to my Savior, my Redeemer, my Midnight Rider, my Soul Provider. I'm on my way back to the Lord. And that's why I can't let a day go by without praising the Lord. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. When I fall, he'll pick me up. Yes, he will. I've got to let the world know that I'm going to praise him with all of my might. He healed my redeemer. He is the one. Yes, he is. When I was on my way to damnation and shame, he picked me up, turned me around. He placed my feet on a solid ground. That's why I got to praise him. Hallelujah. I praise him. No, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody like the Lord can. He's the only one that can rock me in the midnight hour to wipe every tear from my weeping eyes. He's the only one, hallelujah, that can bring me out of my situation. I'm glad that I found him. That's why I can praise him. I can jump and shout and praise the Lord. And ain't there no need and you looking at me because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. He will turn your life around. Hallelujah. Somebody help me say he still, he still want me. I know I messed up, but he still want me. I failed him, but he still want me. I made some bad choices, but he still want me. I'm glad that I'm on his mind. Give him a shout right now. I find for myself I'm on his mind. He's still thinking about me. He's still restoring me. He's still building me up. He's still making a way out of nowhere. I'm still on his mind. Yes, I am. And that's why can't nobody. He is the only one that can drain the ocean dry. He's the only one that can shut up the sky and cause it to not rain. He's the only one that can turn 
the time clock and cause it to back up. He's the only one that can give you joy. I speak about joy. He's the only one. Yes, he is. He's the only one that can make a way out of no way. He's the only one that can open doors that's been closed in your face. He's the only one that can lift up a bow down head. He's the only one that can make you shout when you feel like crying. He's the only one that can put your family back together. He's the only one that can save your children. He's the only one that calls the crackhead to put down his pipe. He's the only one that calls the alcoholic to throw away his bottle. He's the only one that can handle the devil and the enemies that's out to attack you. Somebody help me say he's the only one. He's the only one that can give me joy. Unspeakable joy. He's the only one. a church where love flows because God is in control? A church where God is really real? Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 